Today we're going to discuss the water activation in EPH20. Today we're going to discuss the water alcohol content in primers. And on the left we just got ordinary water and on the right we have 70% isopropyl alcohol, an ordinary eyedropper, and we're going to put it on the surface of a dime 12, 13. Do the same thing on the alcohol side. You'll notice that the water droplets are much smaller. One. 16. Let's take a deeper look into this. This is ordinary bread flour. Pure water. 70% isopropyl alcohol, IPA, is 30% water. This would be 50-50. Drop a food color. Remember that this is unpacked bread flour, but my point is that the pure water seems to just beat up on the surface of the flour and doesn't do much penetration. See how it doesn't beat up as much? So the presence of alcohol in reducing the surface tension allows both the water and the alcohol to penetrate deeper into the surface of the flour. This is 50-50 alcohol and is what Marshall recommends to activate the primer. It's giving us the best of both worlds, both penetration and activation. So what I've learned is that 100% water won't penetrate into the primer compound at all. With the 70% IPA, the addition of alcohol to this helped the activator penetrate into the primer compound, but at 30% water, that's not going to be enough to activate the primer. Believe it or not, it is the water portion that does the activation. You would think it's the alcohol, but it's not. The water does the activation. Now the third bottle cap contained a 50-50 ratio and that seems to be our Goldilocks numbers for the activator. Even with our simple bottle cap experiment, the mixture seems to have penetrated all the way down to the bottom of the bottle cap and at 50% water this should be enough to fully activate our primer. That's one of the reasons why I decided to make this video is that we need to make sure that we activate our primer compound thoroughly all the way down to the bottom of the cup, particularly between the pinch point. That's the region between the tip of the nose of the anvil and the bottom of the primer cup. If you ever have a primer that uh, you perform an autopsy on and you notice you have unspent primer compound in the corners, you know that we're, you're losing a little bit of power just by primer. It's really inactivation. We need to make sure that we thoroughly wet our compounds all the way through. Now, during the filming of this tutorial, I may have stumbled upon something. I don't know, but I had a leftover bottle cap that I didn't know what to do with, so I tried to add one application of actuator at 70% IPA and then immediately followed up by a second application of 100% water and it seemed to have penetrated to the bottom of the, in this case the bottle cup, the best. But again, I had double the amount of activator as the others. Now Marshall tells me the technical term for what we're talking about is a surfactant. And a surfactant is a compound that lowers the surface tension between two liquids. Now I got on Wikipedia and found a list of uh, surface tensions. Found that water and air has a value of roughly 72. It's an ethanol, which is probably the closest thing that we're using uh, isopropyl alcohol has a value of roughly 22 but if we could find a uh, substance or a compound that has a value of less than 22 
we could find a better surfactant for our primers. But until we find that, isopropyl alcohol does a pretty good job and is readily available. So in closing, that's why Marshall has us add isopropyl alcohol to our activator. The alcohol really does help get the water down into the primer compound, deeper into the primer cup. There's a second benefit in that the IPA helps the primer compound dry faster. Now I support if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And your primers are sufficiently powerful and reliable, I wouldn't touch a thing. However, if you ever inspect your spent primers and you find primer compound that's not been totally consumed, you may want to try the two-step activation, changing your percentages of water to alcohol for your activator, and perhaps not packing your primer compound too hard. So applying what we've learned, we might be able to find additional power in our primers merely by tweaking the activator or the activation process. And please use distilled water only for your activator. It only costs a dollar at Walmart. Even Marshall isn't sure what fluoride or chlorine does to your primer compound. But he assured me there's nothing good that will be created in your primer compound when you use tap water as your activator. This is Mark on ArdvarkReloading.com. If you have the financial means, donations on Patreon would be appreciated, but not required. Details below. And if you have technical questions, please join me at the MeWe group called Primer Reloading. Hope to see you there.